Aw oh, yeah, new Forza game. That means new cars to drive, new roads to explore, and new races to win. Now, personally, I haven't played a Forza game in a while. I didn't bother to get an Xbox One for obvious reasons. Let me show you how we're gonna you take live TV, go to Internet Explorer. Oh, nice. But the first game I ever got for Xbox 360 was Forza Motorsport 2, and I've spent hundreds of hours in Forza Motorsports 3 and 4, and the original Horizon, Man, that was everything you could want out of a racing game. So when I heard Microsoft was gonna bring Forza Horizon 3 PC, I got a little excited, but not too much, because if anybody can fuck up a great idea, it's Microsoft. Nice. But goddamn, they did it. The graphics are awesome, three runs of blinds, matchmaking's pretty quick, and races always seem so pretty fresh. Everything that makes a racing game good is here. And the sweeping roads of Australia are great for drifting. And with the addition of drift zones, it's become even more important to the few cars to So if you're tired of flinging that shit ricer into the bushes, spinning out mid-drift, or maybe you just can't keep it up. Uh, the, the drift, I mean. Then you've come to the right place, because I'm going to show you how to tune any car in Forza Horizon 3. So we'll drift all day. When picking a car for drifting, you want to look for something close to 50-50 weight distribution. What I mean is, the weight of the car should be as close to balance in the middle as possible. Too much one way or the other and you'll find yourself having to overcorrect the car. And also, you only want to drift in real-world drive cars, unless you're some kind of bitch. When shopping for upgrades, you basically want to max everything out. Yeah, this is a, a video game after all. Weight reduction, chassis reinforcement, that can help your car's weight distribution, so check those out. Use rally grade springs, they give your car more steering angle, which this is a really good time about, right? Rim style actually has a lot to do with your car. More specifically, the car's cool factor. The more obnoxious the colors, uh, yeah, I don't even know what that is. The higher the cool factor. I'll get more into cool factor soon. For the tires, use sport or street grade. You want to be able to slide. Yeah, this is Australia. You have to put a V8 in by law. And to be a true drift bro, you gotta turbocharge your engine. Naturally aspirated engines are for losers. The choice is yours when it comes to how many turbos you put in. Turbocharging also adds to the car's cool factor. If your penis is under 6 inches, you might want to go for two turbos. First things first, max out the camshafts and the flywheel. Camshafts gives you more range, so you have more power available during the drift. And the flywheel increases your revs faster. Yeah, so both of these are essential for a good drift car. And then after rims and turbochargers, the third piece of cool factor equipment is race exhaust. Because nothing says chode like a goddamn fart cannon. Yeah, so make sure to put that in there. Slapping on all those parts and calling it good, it can work. But for us normal motherfuckers, we have to tune the car. It also makes the car much more friendly to drifting. You aren't going to be easily three-starring any drift zones with an untuned car. If this is your first time in the tuning section, don't worry, it's much more complicated than it looks. Tire pressure. Front tire pressure affects transitions between drifts. Try something high, maybe around 40. The rear controls the initiation of a drift, as well as the speed limit of your wheel spin. You know, the more tire you have on the ground, the more grip you have. 25 is a good starting spot. Next up is camber. This is how camber affects your car. If you haven't seen this graphic a million times in your life. Always try and set your front axles to negative. The more negative you go, the more potential angle you have. Most people start around negative 2.5, and but try to push it all the way to negative 5 if possible. Rear doesn't matter. I mean, 0, negative 0.5. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Toe. Just keep it positive. More positive toe, more angle in the drift. Next! It's kind of a big one. Prepare for a little bit of A minus B multiplied by C equals the front and rear anti-roll bar values. Okay, let's break it down. 
A is the maximum stiffness setting of your roll bar. So max that bar out and that's the number. It will always be 65 if you install race anti roll bars. B is the softest setting, one if you have race anti roll bars. C is the weight distribution of your car. Remember that graphic from earlier? If you don't know the weight distribution of your car, go to your garage and find it there. Mine's 51%, so C equals 0.51. The formula gives me about 33.6. So set that in and do the same for the rear, except C would be 0.49 for me because 49% of the weight is on the rear of the car. That gives me about 32.3. If we move over to the springs, we can use the same formula to find out their setting. The springs control the car's weight from side to side. The stiffer the springs means less weight transfer and faster transitions. So play with this one later once you're kind of more comfortable with the tuning process. And ride height is the single most important aspect of any drift car. I felt this needed its own section. The lower the better. The slight height of a speed bump should be enough to completely total your vehicle. To counteract this, most will increase the height of the front up maybe like a two ticks. Moving over to dampening. We're gonna use this formula one more time here to figure out our rebound stiffness. Once we've done that, bump stiffness should be set around half the value of the top. At least that's what I've always heard. Most people stick around 50% balance going down if needed, but really stick with 50. Higher braking pressure is also important. Maybe something around 120, I don't know, but this is all preference really. I'm be perfectly honest with you, adjusting this has never changed the feeling of the car for me. This slider might just be in here for fun. Most people keep this at 100% or 0%, nothing in between. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay, so it's finally time to test out our car. Find a good place to practice. I like this small town over here. With your gears perfectly tuned, you shouldn't be bouncing off the red line too much during a drift. To start, you need to find a gear that will be the main drifting gear, usually around third or fourth. In lower horsepower cars, it could be second or third. Put your car in gear, drift around some corners. As I said, you want to be just shy of redlining and be smooth on the throttle. If you find yourself too easily redlining, go into your settings and tune final drive towards speed, maybe three ticks or so. This makes you redline at higher speeds. Keep doing this until third starts spinning again. This is the same process for just an individual use. If you're doing this right, it'll be a never ending process of fiddling with gears. Okay, if you're looking for a little more real info on drifting in Forza, Check out the link in the description. Somebody way better than me at tuning put together an epic guide. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, fill the emptiness in the statistics.